This week's code of conduct is strive for restraint, discretion, integrity. We are 25 days without a reportable injury. And this week we're going to talk about hazard communication. It's one of our annual topics to make sure we're covering uh, on an annual basis. As I ask everyone coming in when we do orientation is what does hazardous communication? Um, what how do you understand it? And a lot of people are uh, obviously tricked by the hazardous communication. So I always try to refresh everyone's um, that we are talking about SDS sheets. Hazardous communication standard is uh, safety data sheets uh, readily accessible to employees. Your right to know PPE that's required communicating the hazard of the hazardous chemical products and all SDS have a uniform format of 16 sections. Container labeling requirements. All chemical containers in the workplace must be labeled. All secondary containers must have correct labeling. Call health and safety and we will get you the labels for any chemicals. I do have a format we use for updating all of our SDS sheets. It's called MSDS online. And I can go in there and make any label to go with any SDS sheet that we have. It's pretty cool. And I have labels that are waterproof and stick right on to any container. So these are the symbols that we see on a lot of our chemicals and they're divided in six sections. And then uh, I picked one here. So this is a gas cylinder and gas under pressure may explode if heated. The symbol would be used for compression gas, liquid gas, refrigerated liquid gas and uh, dissolved gas. Gas may cause. Uh, oh, geez. I'm sorry, I don't know that word. Burns. Cryogenic. Cryogenic. Cryogenic burns. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm just going to show you an SDS sheet so everybody is still familiarized with our SDS sheets. Can you see that? Uh, we're seeing your PowerPoint. Okay. Yep. Okay. So just to review, I uh, picked up gasoline for our SDS sheet. And as I stated earlier, it's going to be in 16 sections. So up top we have uh, identification and then we move down to the uh, section two and that is the hazardous identification. And this is when the symbols will come into play here and letting us know that there's four and then there's uh, burn respiratory explosion. And then it goes off explaining that the hazardous uh, statement is extremely flammable liquid and vapors. And then also we're going to go down in here and it's going to be what we need for PPE. If there's anything that we would need for uh, respirators. And this is a big thing too, um, is if we happen to have to call poison control and we have one of our employees at an emergency room or, or a uh, sorry uh first a uh, first aid basis so we do a walk-in clinic so it's a really important that we make sure what we're using for an example say we had someone get uh bleach in their eyes and we need to know exactly which bleach was used we just can't say oh it was clorox uh, we've had the case before where it's just some generic name and we needed to make sure before we did any treatment and calling poison control we knew exactly what we were dealing with so it's important and if there's any new product or if there's anything that uh, it's new to us or the subcontractors having issues. Just make sure that we do have the SDS sheet. Uh, people are going over it and reviewing it. Everything does change. These things are constantly changing, so we just want to make sure everyone's staying safe and knowing that uh, what your exposure is and your right to know of what you're using for chemicals. If there's any questions, concerns or anything, please uh, let health and safety know. And these are always readily available and they're to my fingertips. Uh, we can have them immediately emailed to you, but there is times where we're going to be off grid and we need these. So it would be important that we pre plan and have these readily available by paper copies if we're going to be off grid and can't get them accessibly to anybody in an email. Thank you, Alberta. Um, also, uh, just a reminder of these, uh, a link to our SDS sheets are digitalized in Teams. If you go to your Teams channel under files, 
you'll see SDS sheets and you click a link and it, and it actually goes into our ECI website and you can um, kind of do a search engine to find your chemical digitally as well. We are in the process of updating that, but again, that's a nice little trick to have all those available to you at a mom moment's notice. Very informative, Alberta. Thank you very much. I'll pass it over to Joe now for the rest or for the next step. Thank you, Matt. Can you see my foundation screen? We can. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, so we're we've made a, a little bit of a, an add on into the foundation that we'd like to roll out a process add on it's or um, regarding equipment um, there's been some confusion and some questions have come in on what we do with rental equipment um, when we're logging our equipment that we use each day on our job um, you know how do we deal with rental equipment and, and and then from the on the project management side we've been going about how do we how do we cover or how do we manage the costs of fueling rental equipment uh, because we dump fuel in them all day and that goes on to our aren't to our fuel cards, but our fuel cards don't get divvied up on the project. So when we're when we have a, a big job that's got a lot of rental equipment, basically the job gets fuel for free. So there's a little project management component to it as well that we're trying to um, tighten up. Um, so what we've introduced is we've introduced rental equipment in the list of our, our equipment that is in foundation. So when you go and select your excavator, for example, um, you can now select a rental excavator and so i'll show you how to do that so what you can click on equipment if it's on your dashboard or you can go to your equipment uh, label on on the left hand side and then under your equipment drop down you've got the normal long list of you know of vehicles by the number right they have all all of our excavators trucks um you know other pieces of equipment they all got individual numbers that we can select and some of you probably have them all memorized at least the ones you're using um but then we've also added rental now so if i type in rent just to get the search going then we can see we've got but uh how many do we have here 25 rental pieces of equipment um and so these represent different types of equipment and they're more like categories of equipment. They're not specifics. Um, so we've got a large excavator, um, you know, like a 40 ton and that plus or minus. So, you you know, we can we can try to find the best fit. We may not have a perfect fit, but we want to find the best fit. And if there's any questions, you can call me or call Burns or somebody else if, if you have any questions on uh, on which one to use. Um, so at the end of the day, or the next morning, whenever you do your respective, um, you know, submissions for your equipment, just make sure if you've got a piece of rental equipment on your job that you log it. So if I choose a mid-size excavator, and I'll choose, you know, a job, um, and I'll put my date like I normally would, my cost code, whatever, whatever the equipment is working on, you know, common excavation. I'll choose in this case SW. And then um, unit type is always hours, right? And then to type in the same number, of, the same you know hours that you ran that piece of equipment um, that you would for our own ECI equipment. And so that's it, save equipment. So basically enter it the same exact way you would do our equipment, except it's just a general rental category. Um, so this is really important, um, especially for some of the larger pieces of equipment that are fuel hogs. Uh, and it's also important for other things like like light plants. So, for example, we've got light towers in here. Um, we've got we've got um, if I just actually if I just type in light. We've got our some of our light towers, our arrow boards, um, some trailers. Well, I'm sure track light. That's not the different different kind of light. But then we have the rent light tower. Um, so some of the jobs like the Shelburne Road job right now, for example, has got dozens of light towers on it. We've got some other jobs coming up where we've got a lot of light towers. Um, so we can also make sure we're tracking that because those are, you know, when those are running um, consecutively through the nights, then um, you know, consumes quite a bit of fuel. And we want to make sure we account for that. Um, and then so in your cost code, you can in this case, maybe we have a site lighting cost code and then um, unit type can be hours and maybe we have Maybe we have 10 light towers and maybe 10 light towers are running, um, you know, uh, I don't know, nine hours a night. Uh, we could do 10 times 90. And for this one day, we could actually put in 90 hours. It's not it's um, it's 90 total hours representing all of the 
equipment. So we don't need to put one entry in for each light tower, for example, we can try to keep it simple and we can save that. I already put a date on it and we can save that. Um, and then you can also, the same way you have your, um, your, you know, your ECI equipment, you can add, you can add rental equipment to your group equipment. So here's a, here's a test group. I can add, edit this, and I can search for some rental equipment. If I got a rental excavator on my job, um, you know, say I got that, you know, we got a, a rental uh, John Deere 130 excavator right now. Um, so I'll probably choose that mid-size category and add that into my, my group and I can save my group. And then I can go back and I can um, choose my group. And I can see all the equipment in the group. So you can keep it simple and just add it in there. And, and multiple people might be using the same equipment rental at one time, which is fine. Um, you may not be using the same excavator, right? But if you if someone's got rental light towers on their job and someone else has it in on their job, um, that's okay too. So if there's any questions on that, let me know. And um, hopefully, um, and if there's any question on which unit to use, uh, when to use it, when not to use it, uh, just give give a call and we can um, we can help out. We've got a couple bigger pieces on rent right now. We've got uh, we've got a, a large a 380 excavator. We've got a 130 excavator. I think I know we've got dozens of light towers. Um, we might have a generator or two here or there. Um, we'll be getting. I think we might be doing some more haul trucks and things like that. So uh, definitely, we want to make sure we uh, we capture that stuff in, in our foundation time cards for the equipment. Any questions from from Matt or Albert or Ken? that might represent any questions in the field. Sounds pretty straightforward. All right. Great. Yeah, very informative. Thanks, Joe. OK, I'm going to take over. Let's see if I can figure this out. Screen. There, you see my screen? With the safe, we do can yeah. thank you. Email of the week, good. Okay, so for announcements, uh, there's quite a few things here. And <clears throat> first, uh, an obvious thing if you're on today is that we're we're on Teams versus the uh, go to training. That's going to continue. I think it's gone pretty well. Second item here is uh, there's a new federal holiday that's Juneteenth, celebrating Abraham Lincoln's emancipation. Proclamation of 1862, which outlawed slavery. And for this year, I think that most businesses are just barely responding. I believe that the post office and the banks or others at least open today. I don't know so much about tomorrow and your banks, so we might want to check because, you know, this was obviously a, just a, in the last day that it uh, has all come about and been finalized by Congress and signing of the uh, of the, the bill. So it officially is a holiday on saturday a federal holiday so but next year i'm sure that everyone will be more in geared up for recognition on closers and stuff like that especially the post office federal state high or federal and state uh groups so i also just want to mention that this weekend is the summer solstice or the time when we change to uh, from spring to summer so we're going to peak we're going to hit that peak of daylight hours there will be 15 hours and 33 minutes of daylight on sunday so hope everyone enjoys them every minute of it and of course it's father's day too on the 20th which is sunday so happy father's day to all our eci dads and then of course we just went through the presentation that joey made on the on rental equipment on foundation Continuing to put the primary ECI primary care wellness program on here. I hope that we can get some uh, more people involved, uh, you know, signed up for this because it's a great benefit. And if you have any questions, uh, certainly you can check with myself, Ben or Matt or Alberta, but it's almost better and easier to just go direct to Champlain Medical and give them a ring and say, hey, I want to hear more about this. Can I come in and they'll do a you know a, a physical exam I'm assuming it's about an hour and then you'll be uh, you'll be well indoctrinated oh i forgot to clear some of that Alan pigeon obituary i see message the same though we uh, it's been just over a full year since the passing of alan and we miss you dad 
And there's the uh, obituary link. New employees, uh, we have this, uh, have Gordon Norwood. Uh, I think he'll be working. I think he's the guy who's working mostly out of uh, Southern Vermont. Is that right, guys, Matt? Yes, he'll be a, a flagger. Way so flagger, you, yep. Yep, you may not see him unless you're doing a, on a job that requires flagging down there. The uh, weather outlook, we're, we're in summer mode. Like I said, we're changing, transitioning from spring to summer. And, you know, we got the 80s, the high 70s, and even high 80s. Potential for rain lots of days, just like summer. COVID policies, uh, just the, we changed things, obviously. Last week was, uh, we reached 80% as a state, 80% vaccinated. Governor Scott then lifted all COVID restrictions in Vermont. However, just want to kind of make clear that masks are recommended, but not required for unvaccinated employees working inside. And absolutely, if you have any illnesses or close contact with anyone who's had a positive COVID test in your household or other close relations, uh, report that to the safety department before coming to work. And for the project profile this week, we had the greenhouse pavilion in Shelburne and we're contra contracted with Bird's Eye Construction. They're kind of a high-end uh, residential contractor to build the concrete foundation walls and slabs for a residential greenhouse and pavilion on Shelburne Point. The architect specified Nudura insulated forms or ICFs which are insulated concrete forms and some of the walls were constructed out of normal also constructed out of normal handset wall forms. The walls range in height from 14 foot tall to 8 foot. The foundation was very challenging because of radius walls and corners that didn't work with the ICF blocks. And we had to make our own corners with specialty, specially made ties to hold the corners while pouring the concrete. Uh, some other challenges were window and block outs uh, into the walls and welded steel plates for beams that would be attached later. Once the foundation was done, ECI had two radius retaining walls and one straight section of retaining wall to cast in place. Total yardage for this project was 280 yards of concrete, 25,000 pounds of rebar, ranging from number seven to number four. So that's pretty impressive that a, a greenhouse has a concrete foundation to start with, much less that it has uh, so much that it requires number seven bars. <laughs> so the foundation walls are complete and once backfill is done, ECI will do the slab on grade which is radiant of course and metal deck slabs and a cast in place stairs so there's the concepts of the completed work the pavilion is the front building and then obviously there's some connector to the uh the greenhouse area there's another perspective and one from a lower level and it's uh, not labeled here, but within that, buried within the deeper parts of the underground portion there, of course, is the root cellar. Here's some of the, one of the foundation plans that just gives you an idea of the curvature of the walls and multiple walls here with some really funky angles at, at those connections, but also others. So it was certainly a challenge, a layout challenge, a construction challenge for the forms. I know that uh, there was a little bit of, of calculation involved in scratching heads and and try something a little different to uh, to support and uh, uh, to make sure we're braced properly with the concrete way inside the forms. So there you can see the footing stage. <clears throat> There's the guys uh, one day back in May just setting up the forms, these Nodura forms. They require bracing and especially on corners and and uh, you know funky changes of uh, direction. You see it's a step footing there. There's just it's it's complicated. And the curved one of the sections of curved walls with the forms with all the the, the bracing strong backs. There's some of the more completed work. I can't tell. It looks like it hasn't been poured yet there on the walls. And then obviously it has been poured here with 
some of the the building uh, going up onto the foundation. I believe there's even a brick shelf on this part. And again, here's some of the, the details just uh, at the footing level, how the were you know sealed in and there's uh, looks like there's drains in the footings and uh, you know the curved walls and it, it's I believe this is the root cellar portion below the the remember there's like a connector room at an elevated level well I guess there must be a below ground one too so that's what <laughs> that's what they do in Shelburne in Shelburne Point anyway <clears throat> And from the photo archive, we have a photo of the precast block construction, uh, block wall construction at the Lake Champlain Yacht Club, not far from this site on Shelburne Bay in uh, 2010. So that's what I got. I'll turn it back over to you, Matt. Have a good day out there. Be safe. Um, watch out for uh, hazards. Make sure you have your SDS sheets for any products you have, uh, any chemical products you have, and make sure everything's properly labeled. Thank you, Ken, and thank you for the 50 plus people that attended. If you did attend in a group setting, if you please just send me a message with the people that you watched it with, that'd be much appreciated so we can capture um, a good audience uh, for today's mandatory uh, hazards communication training. Also, um, I will be signing off for the day today, so if any if you need health and safety, if you could call Alberta, it'd be much appreciated as I'm going to try to take a day off today. So. That said, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. Happy fathers to all the fathers out there. Bye-bye. Okay. See ya. Have a good day off, Matt. Yeah, thanks.